to all of you for being for still being here today. Uh, well, uh, what I'm going to present is this uh, is a paper that I already wrote. It's a paper that is in the review for a book that is basically about this idea of how uh, some authors uh, historicize humans. In my case, what I'm going to present is a resignified version of what, how Wallace, uh, Alfred Russell Wallace, uh, developed his own view on evolution, in this uh, case uh, with a focus on human beings. Uh, maybe most of you, especially the people uh, who are not involved with biology or history of biology, know about Wallace in, in relation with Darwin. Uh, basically, this association between Darwin and Wallace is the best well-known uh, thing about Wallace uh, and being the co-developer or uh, co-discoverer, depends on the author of the theory of natural selection, but in this case I'm, not, I'm going to focus on how Wallace developed this idea of evolution in relation with human beings. So, uh, this is a brief summary of what I'm going to present today. It's some historiographic background, especially I'm going to say how, uh, what is uh, historici historicization in this case, what I mean for that. And I'm going to uh, present three different moments in Wallace's life in order to show how he became involved with this uh, uh, historicization of human beings. Uh, especially, well, he, uh, since his job in South Wales, uh, when he began to be a naturalist uh, in his earlier job. Uh, after that, his travels to the Amazon between 1848 and 1852, in which he became involved with these ling uh, especially linguistic approaches of the indigenous tribes that they found during his travels. And after that, uh, his proposal, his specific proposal about the, uh, or the common origin for all the human races, which is uh, quite interesting because it's the first time in, in the history of biology when <coughs> someone <coughs> proposed uh, evolutionary, uh, to give a evolutionary proposal based on natural selection of human beings. It was not Darwin, maybe it can surprise all of you, but it was Wallace the first who established the, the idea that the origin of human beings can be, can be explained through uh, natural selection. Uh, well, I don't find the selection. Well, uh, uh, this phrase, maybe it's also shocking for some of the people who know something about Wallace, is his definition about what is, what is anthropology, what did, at least what was anthropology in 1866. He defined anthropology as the science which, which contemplates man under all his varied aspects, as an animal and as a moral and intellectual being, in his relations to lower organisms, to his fellow men, and to the universe. I have to say, this is not an original definition, because uh, Wallace, uh, in this year of 1866, based his own views on anthropology on the, those from the French uh, the French Paul Broca, and also from uh, people, uh, some other people, in which uh, the idea uh, the, of the study of man in, in, at the mid-19th century was that. Uh, if you want to study man from an, from an anthropological view, you need to consider the diverse aspects of the human beings, the physical, the mental, the relation with the environment, etc. Uh, this is particularly interesting for me because this is, was been the beginning of my PhD thesis. Uh, I did my master on uh, Wallace, and I found this, uh, this uh, phrase, this is the beginning of a very small speech he gave in 1866 as president of the Department of Anthropology in the British Association for the Advancement of Science. Uh, and it was striking for me to find that he was relevant at some point at, at, at the institutional level. Uh, maybe most of you can know that uh, Darwin obscured in many ways Wallace, and Wallace is uh, like a figure that is not very relevant for most of the historians of biology. But uh, when I found this, I began to I began my PhD in this sense. And six years later, well, it took me around three years to find why Wallace was appointed as president of the Department of Anthropology, and it was first because he was part of the anthropological community. Uh, of, of scientists in Victorian England at that time, and because he was the only, uh, the only person who can uh, mediate between two opposite groups, 
the polygenist and the monogenist that I'm going to speak a little more about uh, in, the, in a few slides. Uh, so uh, my interest is uh, <coughs> in the last two years has been uh, to show uh, this interest of Wallace in explaining from an evolutionary point of view uh, the human beings especially. Uh, now, what I mean for historicizing? In a general sense, uh, is the process of constructing sorry, human histories for various scientific, religious, and socio-political purposes. Uh, with these uh, two last points uh, as the main keys. Uh, the origins, we can say biological, social, and cultural origins of human beings in this case, and deep time, or the other way to say it, geological time. Uh, this is Charles Lyell, who is the originator of this idea of, the deep, of, the, of deep time, along with another Scottish, uh, James Hutton. Uh, and this is the basis of what, the, of what you can uh, conceive as a history or anything, in this case, history of human beings. So, uh, my first step is to show a little uh, the first experiences of Wallace in. Uh, South Wales in the period of 1837 to 1843. Uh, Wallace, in many ways, is a different character if you compare with some others in the history of biology. Uh, he had to leave the school around the age of 14, and after that, he, he began to work in many things. Uh, in this time, uh, with one of his brothers, he began his work as a surveyor. Uh, he had to put the limit between the different uh, the different region, regions in the South Wales. And in that sense, he had contact with many, 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 many groups that in uh, some years later helped him in order to write one of his first writings, one of his first <coughs> essays. In this case, something simple, The South Wales Farmer. Uh, he wrote this essay in 1843, but it was published until 1905 in his autobiography, My Life. Uh, but it's a very interesting uh, piece of writing in which he began to try to describe, if you want, from this ethnographic, ethnological point of view, the manners, the culture, the social interests of the people of South Wales. But not, not just the culture. Uh, there are two striking descriptions in the essay in which he is going to describe language and religion. Language uh, at this time in Victorian times it was very uh, it's a, it was a very way it was, was a very common way to understand the origins uh, of any particular group. Uh, at this moment, uh, when, I, when he was in Wales, uh, Wallace was not uh, how can I say he didn't read uh, some things uh, relevant for his formation as, uh, for his formation as a naturalist. He was more a curious guy who wanted to know something about the people who, who, who were uh, at, the, at the farms. But if you take the, you can read the, the paper. Uh, it's very short. It's like 16 pages or something like that. Uh, you can find this kind of of, um, of statements such as the purity of the origin of the Welsh in, uh, compared with the English, for example. Uh, he says, for example, when describing the, 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 the Welsh language, uh, that is, it was guttural, but when well spoken, it's melodious and impressive. If you had the opportunity to listen at the Welsh, uh, the Welsh people, it's quite strange, uh, in fact, the, the language. But, it, but it's true, it's quite melodious in some ways. Uh, but also, this uh, choice of words, as I put in the slides, illustrate how his, his attitudes could vary when describing other people, on the one hand, sympathetic and respectful, and on the other, maybe this idea of being superior, the English were superior to the Welsh in order to describe uh, these kind of attitudes. So these are the uh, first, uh, the first uh, impressions uh, and the first, uh, um, the first uh, ways in which Wallace is going to be involved in trying to describe a history of the humans. Now, uh, after this, his time in, in uh, Wales, he has spent some time as a teacher in Leicester. And it's very important that during his, this time in Leicester, from 1843 to 1848, something, he has spent a lot of time teaching, but also reading. 
And that's important because at least uh, for the Welsh scholars, uh, we can identify that at this time is when he read some of the uh, key books that they're going to mark his views about nature, about evolution, etc. What I mean is that in this case he read Darwin, for example, The Voice of the Beagle, that marked uh, that Wallace in many ways, or Humboldt Voyages to, to America, for example. But he also read Malthus. Malthus was a crucial influence in order to understand the struggle for survival, for example. He also read The Constitution of Man, speaking about the phrenology. May, uh, Wallace was very uh, sympathetic with all these kind of, uh, we can, well, pseudosciences, if you want, phrenology, mesmerism, spiritualism, after some years. But it was not that the important thing, because reading the Constitution of Man, it was clear for Wallace that nature can be explained through natural laws, something very, very significant, significant in order that he can develop a natural view on the history of human beings, for example. Uh, and another uh, key reading, it was Lyell, Principles of uh, Geology. It marked not just uh, Wallace, but also Darwin, in the sense to apply gradualism to the history of life, in this case, the history of human beings. In the same way that Lyell explained the geological processes as gradual, uh, both Darwin and Wallace could explain the same both with biology, with biological organisms. And this is something that is not, uh, is not original for me. Uh, uh, there's, uh, this was proposed in the mid-70s by American historian Henry Louis McKinney in his classic uh, Wallace and Natural Selection, and more recently, and one of the finest historians of biology I know, uh, uh, Jonathan Hodge, published in Spanish, hopefully for us, uh, one paper about this, uh, this influence of Lyell, both in Darwin and Wallace, for example. Uh, but this is a very interesting time also for this reference. December 28, 1845. Uh, Wallace uh, sent a letter to his friend, uh, uh, Henry Walter Bates, uh, this guy. Uh, both of them went to the Amazon traveling in order to collect, and, well, for life, basically. But also, uh, one of the reasons for Wallace to travel to the Amazon was to try to, look, uh, to find a mechanism in order to explain the transformation of the species, the transmutation of the species. And why was that? Well, Wallace read this book, uh, Robert Chambers' book, Vestiges of the History of, Na of the Natural History of Creation, published anonymously in 1844, uh, that marked his views about how nature, in this case, how uh, the humankind can be explained uh, through uh, natural laws, but uh, from a, a, a transformation point of, point of view. And uh, quite interesting, these two guys, uh, James Cole Spreacher and William Lauren, both uh, phys physicians, uh, were uh, very important for Wallace in order to give uh, the point of view that the, mono, uh, that the monogenetic explanation was the key in order to understand a common origin for humankind. Just, uh, both of these uh, guys, Richard and Lawrence, based his views on the studies of language. And in, that was a very important influence for Wallace also during his travels. Especially when he was in the Amazon, he developed a, a lot of writings in relation with, uh, with languages that helped him, not, well, not just him, but also other people. One of the linguists uh, of the time, Robert Latham, one of the most important uh, also uh, found in the Wallace uh, would help in order to understand the origin of languages in, the, for example, in the Amazon. Uh, also, we can find in, in Wallace's diaries uh, more sophisticated descriptions about the indigenous tribes in the Amazon. This is not just now about curiosity, but it's also a more sophisticated uh, view based mainly on these views by Preacher and Lawrence but also in some other authors. This is one example uh, of this uh, comparison that Wallace made between uh, the, the Indians of South America with the, the, he said, the intelligent and noble races inhabiting the western prairies of North America, for example. 
he was quite melodic also. Uh, this kind of ideas gave, uh, gave uh, Wallace the conditions in order to find a better way to explain the origin of, of uh, humankind, of the human races. Uh, now he had the idea of gradualism, now he had the idea of a common origin, now he had some elements that helped him in order to propose uh, uh, this, uh, this idea. Uh, this was presented in 1864 and later published in the same year. It's a, um, a paper <coughs> named the, the title, The Origin of Human Races Under the Through Natural Selection. It, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, it was the first time that someone proposed that human evolution can be explained through natural selection. But it is very striking that no one remembers that. But it was quite uh, uh, important at the moment, especially among the anthropological and ethnological communities. Uh, this is well. This phrase uh, is related with some other, with other paper that he developed after after his travels uh, on the varieties of man in the Maya in the Malay archipelago. And I put it in order to show how again he is showing the importance of life or ideas in order to explain the geographical distribution of the, of the races in, in, in among the globe. Uh, but he was uh, stating also that this continuity between races can also explain, for example, that humans can be related with orangutans in this case. Well, uh, this is not a very happy picture. Uh, this is the, an orangutan scheme that is in the Liverpool Natural History Museum because uh, Wallace shot this uh, orangutan. After that, he kept the little baby orangutan uh, for two and a year, for two years and a half. If you are interested, there is a very interesting paper by Wallace named uh, "A New Kind of Baby," and he describes his experience with the uh, little orangutan during this time. So, uh, at this moment, 1869, after the, his travels to the uh, Malay Archipelago, he was he already developed this view about this common origin on the gradual, a gradualistic point of view for all the humankind, for all the human races. Uh, this, uh, I hope that at this moment I, uh, I can show, to, I can show <coughs> to you how he changed his mind from his time in South Wales to uh, his travel to the Amazon and after that his travels to the Malay Archipelago in order to show these key ideas on how he conceived the history of humans and how this can be seen as something different from other uh, authors at that time. Um, well, uh, my final reflections, and I'm just trying to, to emphasize this, uh, well, because I'm trying to, st uh, to make a different statement in comparison with some other Welsh scholars, because I have to say that uh, the, most of the Welsh scholars have not uh, uh, put emphasis on this idea that Wallace developed his evolutionary theory uh, following the idea to explain human evolution. Uh, for example, John Van Wy at the University of Singapore in one of his recent uh, books, Dispelling the Darkness, for example, he says that Wallace developed his view because uh, of the beater, uh, the tiger beetles he found during his, uh, during his travels, which is quite strange because he just saw these tiny beetles once, maybe, or twice, something. Uh, well, anyway, my point is, Wallace's view on evolution, it was a historicizing humans. It was his main effort as a naturalist. Uh, and it was a coherent point of view developed through, very, through many years taking information from these experiences in the field, especially both in Wales, in England, but also overseas, as it was in the Amazon or in the Malay Archipelago. And, well, this is historicizing humans for us. Thank you very much.